Welcome, everyone, to another edition of Stepping Up to the Plate. So glad you could join us. I'm your host, Michael Vega, for another scintillating round of sports talk here in Milton. We'll be covering all things sports with my main man, Al Prezzuti, who joins me here on the dais. And it's a uh, special day out all across the country because it's opening day. Baseball, it's going to be opening day today. And, uh, you know, we're going to be opening the season, though, with a hint of controversy. Uh, right off the bat, Al, we'll just address what is uh, facing Major League Baseball and a major controversy involving perhaps its biggest star in Sohei Otani, a gambling controversy for which his interpreter paid the price, losing his job. And Al, when this happened, there was a little bit of a stench in the air that caused my nose to wrinkle. And like I said, something smells fishy here because how did this guy, his interpreter, have access to his bank account? Wow. And, uh, and, and, the, and the fact that these payments were made directly out of his bank account to a bookie is, is kind of fishy. So I think Major League Baseball said, you know what, we need to look into this further. Major yeah. League Baseball is going to cover it up even if they find something because Otani's the biggest name in baseball for them. So my guess is and you, you can't tell me he didn't know. You, and and Correct. why would he give an interpreter access to his account? Correct. I mean, there's so many unanswered questions. And as a matter of fact, yesterday, his comments, if you read them, he said nothing at all nothing. to clear it up. No, no. I mean, it sounds so stupid. It would be like me saying, you know, uh, I, I have a friend of mine. He's, he's not my financial advisor, but he just took $450 million out and paid uh, a bookie. Yeah, that's stupid. It but, is. you know... That was like Pete Rose, and, uh, you know, they didn't like Pete Rose. They love Otani. So <laughs> we'll see what and, happens. And, Al, the thing that, to me, was even more fishy was that the Dodgers allowed this guy to go on this road trip with them to Seoul, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and Otani was interacting with this guy up until the day he got fired. Yeah, I know. And Otani was claiming, oh, I didn't know anything about it. To oh, me, yeah. it smacks of... This guy is the fall guy. Yeah, he they're, threw him they're putting under the it bus. on him so him that none of bus. it lands on Otani's lap. He, he threw him under the bus. The second thing is, how stupid. I mean, he comes out of this either way, okay? Right. If they say, well, this guy did it and all this, he comes out as somebody who, how could he let this happen? Right. How could he not know? Right. So he, How could he, he gets not be tarnished. complicit? Yeah. yeah, he gets tarnished no matter what happens right. here. And you know what? And I think that's, the, that's going to be the overarching question for MLB investigators is how could he not be complicit? And if they don't answer that question or they, re, or they ignore that question, well, what he said, then, yeah, yeah, it's a cover-up. What, what he said yesterday was, A, I never bet on uh, sports. But first he said my team yeah. or um, baseball. Then he said on any sport and I don't even have a bookie. So he went all through all of that. And you know what? These guys have so much money, it, it's, it's crazy. Oh, they, 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 let me tell you, they, any chance to wager, they would have. Yeah. And I mean, that's the prevalence of gambling in sports now. Uh, they invited that. Yeah. This, is what, this is what Major League Baseball we'll has We'll find sold. out it's two best friends of Phil Mickelson and, uh, <laughs> and Michael Jordan. Between those two guys, they bet more money than... Uh, and you know what? I, I think their respective... Sports have done well to cover up yeah. some of the, you know, illegal associations they may have had. Yeah. You know, I don't know. I'm not casting aspersions here. I'm just stating facts. But, you know, while we're on baseball, you watch it. I mean, I watch the Red Sox, and the Red Sox had a pretty good spring. Yeah. Let me, yeah. Let me put it that way. Uh, but did you come away encouraged about what, no, what this is? No, no, no. Because, first of all, I mean, spring training to me means absolutely nothing. You're just looking at players. Well, that, you're looking you know, at the You're up against pitches that won't be playing. Yeah, yeah. All of that stuff. But... The other night I watched, it took me three innings to see somebody I knew. I mean, toward the end of the game, they had guys in there. I have no idea who they are. Now, I know Abreu, and I know guys like that, and, and, yeah. but the, the pitching is going to kill this team, for one. Yeah. And then I think they're going to be able to hit because they're in a hitter's ballpark, for one. So they play 81 of the games at home. 
I don't think they're going to be as bad as they were the last couple of seasons. However, without pitching, they go nowhere. And, you know, it's going to be an interesting, uh, interesting haul. I'll tell you one thing. Uh, Hercules there, O'Neal, is oh. – he yeah. is built. Yeah. He can I mean, hit. he hit that home run the other night. I mean, further than Story's ball, but. Um, well, him and, and Story are, are, are pretty jacked. Story's, yeah. well, Story, well, Story's an athlete. He's an athlete. I mean, he's a great shot. He's, he's all around <laughs> a good ball player. Yeah. The guy that, that they're touting, and I still am out on Casas, and for one reason. He's still got a big swing. When he makes connections, obviously he hits the ball. Now, the yesterday I read on the, in the Internet that uh, they're touting him as the next door tease. I'm not sure he's, he's there. <laughs> but he hit 20-something home runs last year. And two years ago, uh, Dahlbeck hit 25 home runs for the Red That's Sox. That's another guy. I, I mean, Bobby Dahlbeck, for me, to me, elevated himself this spring. Well, Bobby Dahlbeck is an interesting guy for a number of reasons. One, he can play first. He can play third. They also played him. In uh, down in um, uh, the Woo Sox in the outfield last year, yeah. toward the end of the year, because they want him, they can platoon him in another, in, in a lot of situations. Plus, against a lefty, yeah, he's going to hit. So, do you make Jared Jared Duran your one of your corner infielders now with no Rafaela in here no. or no Jared Duran? First of all, people don't realize how big that kid is. Yeah, he's another he's, one. He's jacked. Yeah. I mean, he's he's pretty big and he and fast. So you know, he makes a single, a triple. When he hit, when you hit a ball either to the left center or right center, he's going to get it. Now, yeah. whether he he drops it is another, but he's going to get to so it. He's more he's more strategically he's, positioned. He's very in versatile yeah. in terms. Of, his speed is something that we've never seen with the Red Sox. Yeah. And. He adds a dimension that they never had, and now they're going to use him as a leadoff hitter. Which makes perfect sense to Which, me. which makes sense. Now, yeah. if he can get on either through base hit or, or uh, walking, he could steal second. He can go from first to third on a, on, a, on a lazy ball to the outfield. That's a run. If there's only one out at the time or no outs at the time when he goes from first to third, all you need is a fly ball to bring him in. Absolutely. So... It's kind of like what Mookie Betts did for this team when he was here, wasn't it? Yeah, he's quicker than – he's probably the <laughs> fastest. Mookie was interesting because Mookie was a – well, second baseman, really, that yeah. they put out in the outfield. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I think they have some potential. Uh, some elements. This is potential. But, you it's know – It's going to come down to the pitching. You're absolutely correct. Yeah. And the thing that I continue to just scratch my head – all right, Blake Snell was there for the, for the taking – the Giants sign him up. Uh, Montgomery. Two sixty-two mil. Jordan Montgomery's there for the taking. All right. He winds up getting picked up just recently by the Diamondbacks. Twenty-eight million dollars, though. Okay. But the uh, thing no, is, I would have paid it. There was million. value there, you He's know, and there would have been value here. That's a lefty. Okay. So look at this ro- rotation now. If you had Jordan Montgomery there in there, who's out of the rotation? How? Uh, how probably uh, you know Whitlock is 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 Cemented going from himself. going yeah. from relief to. To starting, you got uh, Pavetta, who probably has got the iron arm of the group. I mean, he can give you six well, innings. He too seven went innings. from re- to starting to relief, now back to back starting. Back to starting because he's got an iron arm. I mean, he's not yeah. one of these guys that, that that's been on the you know DL quite no. a bit. The other kid, to me, only reason that he's starting and everybody's touting him is because Pedro Martinez is his mentor. Yeah. I mean, he's a good pitcher, and I think he's got a oh, yeah, significant upside. But yeah. to have him as your starting pitcher at this age for this team, again, is kind of a testament to what this team's all about. And then there's Cutter Crawford, and, and he's a guy who kind of like came out of nowhere. Yeah. And is so, that just a, an indication of the, uh, the lack of depth in their, in their, amongst their pitching rotation? I think the starting pitching is weak. I think their yeah. relief pitching is a little better. Yeah. I mean, if Jensen is fine, I mean, he looked pretty good the other night. I mean, he can throw the ball, oh, the guy. Sure. He's got a weird motion for yeah. me. Yeah. You know, he doesn't come at He kind of, I, I don't know, if he could pick up the motion, I think you could hit him. But yeah, evidently you can't because he's been very successful. So it was interesting. Uh, all the prognosticators in the globe came out with their preseason picks or predictions for the postseason, and not a one had the Red Sox even sniffing a wild card, yeah, well. you know. And it's interesting, a lot of them had the Orioles. 
you know, uh, going all the way. Well, the Orioles are, I mean, have a good team, uh, I, yeah. I, and they also have pitching. Yeah. So, I, you know what? When it comes right down to it, these guys are looking at the team. Not right. the hitting, not the pitching, but the team. They look at it all. Orioles seem to have a pretty good mix of both hitting and pitching and defense. And not only that. And, yeah, and youth. They have youth, young yeah, talent yeah. that is stocked away. They sent back one of the more exciting players mm -hmm. back to the minors. That guy could be starting right now for yeah. them. I don't understand the move to send Bernardino back to well, uh, he'll the Blue probably, Sox. He'll probably be back. Well, because long. they need lefties. Right. And, you know, and even in the lineup, you could take Jared, Jared Duran out of that lineup, and, and they're loaded with right-handed hitters. Yeah. And, you know, Casas is a, is a, is a left-handed hitter. But where do you play? Where do you put Casas in the lineup? That's going to be an interesting thing because he never was in the third, fourth slot. No, he was like been. six. He was five and six, six which, yeah. which is, I guess, an indicator. You know, when, when, the, when the Red Sox always had – the sluggers, it was always Ted in the third spot. He wasn't a cleanup hitter. He was no. always third. Yeah. And then you had Yastrzemski and, and Yaz so was all over the third place. third right now? I think Story will be the guy yeah. because he's a, he's a contact hitter. Yeah. And that's what you need. You know, when you get runners on, if Duran gets on, so there's got to be a way Devers to get him home. is your home. number four guy. I would think so. Yeah. Devers is going to probably, I mean, he's hitting the ball pretty well. He had a home run the other night. Yeah. Uh, I would think Devers is good for 30. And Abreu? But I'll tell you one thing about Devers, though. The 279 batting average doesn't cut it for the amount of money that this guy is. He's got to, he's got to prove it this year, too. And he's got to be the leader on the team, and I'm not sure he is because he's, he's over Too there. Good uh, skills are not there. Too much, what do you call it? He's, he, he seems like he's a little flaky. Yes. Kid. Yeah. I don't know, but maybe he's not. Maybe he's better in the clubhouse than I think. But uh, Yeah, certain, he's lacking the gravitas, Al, yeah. that most leaders like a Patrice Bergeron had. Yeah, watch, spades, watch the second you know. baseman when he comes in, though, the kid they picked up for uh, a Sale. Grissom. Uh, he's got some power, this kid. Yes. You know, he's not a he's not a. So a, is, a he, is Grissom your number two hitter? Because if you get both no, you Duran and Grissom on base, and then you come up with Story, you're going to start entering. I think you're Duran, Duran, runs. you've got to go. If Duran's on leadoff and he's having a decent season, either through walks and hits and whatnot, I'm not sure you want to put um, uh, Story. You're not going to play. Story's going to bat third. third. Dev is fourth. Casas probably fifth. Abreu um, six. Well, Abreu might be six, but, you know, then they've got to figure out what they want in the second spot. Mazataka? Well, yeah, you know, he's, he's, a, he's another guy that had a fairly decent year. Number two spot. Yeah. So, Mazataka, number two, and then you put... Uh, not, not Story three. Sto no, no, no. Uh, who do we have in that second spot that we were talking about? Uh, was it Rafael? I mean, think. It could be Rafael. I mean, yeah. I mean you no, know. No, 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 Grissom. Grissom. Grissom is the guy I think when Grissom, he comes in. Maybe, maybe Grissom in that eight spot. Yeah, and, and look, you know, O'Neal's going to be the DH, I think. So maybe he goes in that third spot. Yeah, the because he can, the kid can hit. Yeah. You know, and he, he, he doesn't have a great, he's not a great outfielder, but he's got a pretty so good So Mazataka run. then is going to be yeah, like maybe. seven or eight hole? I did, well, my, I think you're going to look and see Cora's big for this. Who's pitching? Yeah. You know, if there's if there's a righty that's, out that's there, gonna it's going to be it's going to be Grissom. If it's a lefty, it'll be. I mean, just the opposite. I mean, right. Lefty, so right. He'll play the percentages on that, but uh, you know, I don't get excited about spring. So, training. do you have any projections, Al, uh, for number of wins this year for the Red Sox? I think they'll. I think they're going to be a better team than people think. Eighty range. Uh, I would think they're going to be in the 80, 85 range. So they'll win more than they lose. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, that's, that's a high I, bar. <laughs> but that, that, I mean, you win 85 games, uh, you know, it, it, 81 would be a 500 team. Well, 500 team. team. But 85, that's not bad if there's parity. Yeah. You know, if one team runs away with it, like the Orioles will say, if they win 104 or 5 games, I mean, you're still 25 games out of first place. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I don't know. I, yeah, I, first, I, first. 
let's just put it out there, first place is going to be out of I reach. Think, for well, I'm not sure. I think that there's always more parity, injuries, this, that, for pitching, guys go down. Um, if they win 85 games, I think people will be a little happier. I've already been tabbed for four games. <laughs> I told him I'm not doing April. Okay. Because too cold at night. Too cold, yeah. and I'm not doing September. Too and cold. They'll never make October. But <laughs> so I'm I'm always look. I'm going to be looking at July and August. August. So I'm going to I'll pick four games, and they could be out of it by then. August, it could yeah. be out of it, yeah. but no, maybe not. You don't know. Maybe Yankees, June, Yankees got June, some I issues. June, I think it'll be more realistic. <laughs> we'll get a, a clearer picture in June yeah, as well. they approach the trading deadline. But you know, know what makes it fascinating? Sports. So we're going to we'll get into both the Celtics and the Bruins. What yeah. makes it fascinating is watching a team like the Celtics, which are, I mean, everybody's pick. Yeah. They play uh, Atlanta the other night up by thirty. Yeah. And I hate to say, I hate to say it. No, I'm glad my, you bring my it up. job to say it, but Porzingis said it best. When we were up by 30, he said we just felt like they we lost the rope. it. We they lost it. He said, and rope. against a, a good offensive team like the Hawks, before you know it, we were scrambling. And he was right. And that's what sports is all about. You don't know. You have to play the right. game. So who's going to win? Who's going to lose? The, who's, you, the Red Sox what? that good? When they get out on the field and play, right. anybody can win. Anybody can win, and anybody you know, can lose. Not to say that he might have been happy about it, but you know what? Joe Mazzula goes, okay, all right. This is what I'm going to put in my pocket, and I'm going to pull it out and say, look what happened when you were up 30 against these guys. Wow. Do not let up now. Well, any, you know, we're going to keep going. Any good coach... Yeah. Learns more from the losses than Correct. he does from the wins. And he does. He and I think Montgomery is going to – well, could either prove himself to be a better uh, coach yeah. when they lose than when they were well, – last year they won 65 games. I mean, he wasn't even coaching. Everybody kept saying – He was on cruise control. He was on cruise control. He was on total cruise control. Yeah. So, and then when they hit adversity in the playoffs, you know, against a, uh, you know, a game Panthers team – you know, now they were like they get smacked in the mouth, and so you is know it, what I'm glad is that okay, the Celtics they're rolling along the same way the Bruins did last year. Yeah. But now they got smacked in the mouth a little bit. Hey. But they've sobering they've, wake up. They've call. got smacked in the mouth a, a couple, couple of times. times. So but what, they, and they've also smacked other teams. In what's the mouth. kind of interesting though is yeah. this team kind of mirrors what's going on with the Bruins. Yes. They get ahead. They can't hold it for some reason. Yeah. They can't hold it. The Bruins are doing the same thing and yeah. for a lot longer and, and more sustained yeah. than the Celtics. The Celtics, odds on favorite. If they lose it, it's going to be a huge surprise. The same as the Bruins last year. Yeah. Yeah. But, again, you've got to look at injuries and you've got to look at Porzingis. You know, I, we were talking about this yesterday with a group of friends you got Tatum, you got Brown, you got White, you've got uh, Holiday, and Porzingis. Jeez, come on. But two guys are missing from that game. Yeah. Holiday and White. Yeah, well, Holiday to me and White are the two keys, keys. for that yes. team because you know what you're going to get from Jason Tatum, and sometimes you know what you're going to get from Brown. If Tatum's here, Brown's here. If Brown's up here, Tatum's here. The problem with Tatum is, though, he wants the ball all the time. He really does. He's got the bigger ego. I the other kid is what, wants to win. win. And, and, and and he's he has got the ability to get to the rim whenever yeah. he wants. Well, they stole to get Holiday. To his spot. They stole him. Oh my God! Yeah. What they gave up for this kid and what they got was a kid who plays harder than Marcus Smart on defense. Smarter yeah. than Marcus Smart, <laughs> and 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 also he's a better team player. Yeah, yes. because you know, he's a, he's a red Auerbach model. Yeah, I mean he could be the star of that team. He doesn't care to be the star of that team because he's got. Well, all he's these new to the team. Guys. You know, yeah. he's trying to probably feel his way a little bit. But I agree with you, Al. Uh, as much as it pained me to lose Marcus Smart, because I really love the guy. I love what he brought to the team. I loved his grit, the snarl he played with. Uh, you know, Drew Holiday is kind of like a silent assassin, man. You know, he plays with the same, but he's very Holiday's cerebral, too. Holiday's got the bigger, uh, the he's more very respect yes. in the league than I think so. Marcus Smart had. And, you know, when, and as I mentioned to you before, I remember in those playoff series, 
uh, against the Bucks, the guy I thought was the matchup problem for the Celtics was Holiday. Yeah. You know, and they didn't have Middleton, but Holiday was a guy. Look at that. I, 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 I kind of got to like Marcus Smart toward the end. I wasn't. I'm not a really not a, not still Can not I a big fan. <laughs> but here's the deal: <laughs> if it comes down to a, a playoff game and you want somebody to shoot, it's got to be Tatum, it's got to be Brown, it's got to be Holiday, Porzingis if he's outside and he's open, and White, White yeah. especially because yeah. he seems to he hits big bats, a Dennis Johnson type of yes. player, but. Mark is smart. He'll shoot whenever he wants to shoot, and he can hurt you sometimes. Yes. Whereas Holiday will never hurt you. No. Never. No. So, Jason Tatum can hurt you because he takes the ball and he thinks he's a god what I, what, sometimes. What I, yeah. What I don't like uh, is when he, when they get into the half court set and it's clock is winding down, it's a critical basket, and sometimes he's better off just going straight downhill. What he does is like he'll sit up and he'll throw some hot sauce at the guy, you know, dribble, 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 oh, know, yeah. head fake, pump fake, oh, yeah. head fake, pump fake, He's dribble, a dribble, dribble, <laughs> spin move, and then he starts his he starts his move, and then the guy just pokes it away from him. Yeah, he's a, he because well, he that's, exposes the ball. Right. He, he, sometimes he he, he, th he thinks he's a god, him. and and yeah. you know what? He doesn't have the same equilibrium as a god has, and and folk. Uh, and well, he's folk most dangerous is when he's got the ball right here, yeah. and he's cradling it, getting ready to go yeah. to the rim, you know. And when he's got it right here, and he's going and making his move, no one's touching him. He's he's in, you know, uh, he's invincible at that point. But uh, you know. We'll see how that works out, you know, with the uh, the Celtics, uh, the Bruins, obviously making. Uh, a well, huge before run. we get into the Bruins, I mean, a little on the Pats, you know, I, oh, I, yeah, I saw yeah, yeah. Kraft and yesterday we, talking about the dynasty, yeah, and yeah. Mayo saying, "Yes, we're going to listen to people because we everybody wants to move up in the draft. Everybody wants to move up, and we're number three. If something came that made us a better team." We have to listen to it. But then Kraft also said, I want a quarterback. Now, today, I un my understanding is, though, that Mayo believes, and I don't, that Jacoby Brissett could be their quarterback. Now, he could start even if they draft uh, the number three yeah, quarterback. Yeah, I, I don't mind that. If, if yeah. I don't mind who comes in and starts the season and, and until they feel like the kid is – learn the system and whatnot and is the guy that can lead them. But Brissett doesn't give you any more than 10 wins, no more, nine wins or whatever. I don't believe. I don't think he's that good of a quarterback. Right. But you know what? They've got an opportunity here because they're pulling a lot of guys in to be a better team than they were last year yeah. with a different mentality. Guys want to win for Mayo. I'm not sure anybody ever really wanted to. I think they were afraid of Belichick. And that was one of the things that was a, a startling uh, admission by Danny Amendola in this docuseries, The, the Dynasty, yeah, that, where he I, I, says, I, you know, hey, uh, we played for, you know, Tom Brady. Yeah. We worked for Bill Belichick, but we played for Tom Brady. Well, Belichick was a different type of guy, I yeah. think, though. But he was a winner, and I don't, I'll don't—I'll never take anything away from yeah. him. I think he was a yeah. great coach. But I think, I think, I their, think uh, a change in mentality, philosophy, um, how you handle players could be a, a big positive for the for the. Uh, well, Patriots. the other thing, too, is, you know, when, they're, when they were making this dynastic run, you know, they had this championship aura about them in the organization and that they were a first-class organization. Mm -hmm. You saw that when, you know, after one Super Bowl, Kraft goes out and buys two beautiful jets, you know, to, to use to ferry his team around. And you thought, wow, that's pretty, that's pretty impressive. Their team is traveling first class, you yeah, know, in, well, in first well. class. But then this NFLPA poll comes out, and nothing further could be from the truth. You, talk, you see the stuff that these other organizations are doing for players and these are really recruiting tools they're not getting those high price free agents because when they come down to make their decisions right they got to make sure that their families are happy with the move yeah you i know. think you're going to find out who was responsible for the patriots always as a player got toward the end of his career yeah now was that craft 
or was that Belichick? And if, if, if and why players don't want to stay? Look at Ezekiel Elliott thinks is it looks like he might be going back to the uh, Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. They're talking to him. He's a free agent. And that, uh, that I think, is a problem because he's only 28, 29 years old. The kid can, here, is still. multi-talented. He should I mean, be here. Yeah, well, you know. You know they, I don't know why they, they couldn't see that. But they picked up a running back, and they've got a Ramondre. Uh, so I think they're, they're feeling you don't need a used guy. We might have a, a different approach, yeah. Who knows? I, I still maintain how generational talent doesn't come every, every, ever so often. And when you spot a guy that has that type of talent, you, it, it, it behooves you to go out and if you have the opportunity, like the Patriots do now, they have the draft capital to go out and get a guy that's going to tear the top off the top of defenses because they've never since, not since Randy Moss, have yeah, they I had know, a guy. I know what you're going to say, Harrison and all that yeah, stuff. But or you not know even what? him. Not even him. Yeah. Now, there are guys... There are really some good receivers in this. The, the kid down in But in, you still need a LSU's quarterback. just as good. You need a quarterback. Romo Dunze over in Washington is a player. Yeah, without the quarterback, you don't win. I don't well, care who it is. Somebody got to get but, the ball to Harrison. But you know what, though? You can move up yourself mm-hmm. to get into that position, to get no, the guy. I don't think so. And you know what? I, I say J.J. McCarthy's going to be there. Yeah. He'll be there in the later rounds. No. Well, you look know, at it. And the he's last... a guy that you can develop. Last minute and a half on the Bruins. Yep. That was a big win for them last night because they were trailing for the first time in a long time and came back at the end and scored two goals in the last five minutes yes. and then held on. Yes. I mean, they pulled the goalie. There was a lot of scrambling they pulled the goalie going for on like there. The last four minutes. I'll tell you one thing, though. I still, and I look at this and I say, when I watch the games, the Bruins never looked like the better team, and they still didn't look like the better team in the first 10 minutes of that game or at any time during the game. They played pretty well toward the end, but the Panthers got more. Oh. And Verhage kills them. He scored that goal, made it 3-2. to two. I said, oh, dude, here's the guy that beat them last year. Yeah. Kachuk is an, is an aggravator. He's Marshawn with, with size. Well, did you see him at the end of the game? He yeah. was like, look at the fight guys, well, you know. So I, I think the two things, though, that, that, that I think the Bruins can do. If Maroon comes back and can play. Yes. And they had Luchik in the lineup. But you've got Frederick. You've got uh, Maroon. You've got this kid. Peek is not small, you know. He's a big kid. So they like, need the grit. What Marshawn did, hats off to him because he's not having a great year. season. No. But he's always there, always there. And to take a guy on seven inches bigger and probably. It's like Andre the Giant, there. you know? He t- and <laughs> he's Slin- dropping the gloves with Andre Hampton the Giant. Lindholm fighting once, first time in seven years that he's been in the league that he fought. He didn't do too well. Yeah. But, but that's good that they're showing. Snarl Al, and uh, yeah, that was the thing I think that, you know, Jimmy Montgomery takes away now uh, going forward. And uh, so it'll be interesting to see how they do that. So. Well, they got t- uh, Tampa tonight. They got the uh, Carolina. Yeah. They got Washington. Then they got Carolina and the Tampa and Tampa Tough again. Row. I mean, uh, the Panthers again. But this could set the tone. This could set the well, tone. Well, like Montgomery said, this is what you have to do. We're preparing for the playoffs. This is the way we're going to play. What they played last night was playoff hockey. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Anyway. All righty. Well, that's going to do it for us here. want to thank you very much for spending your time here, and we look forward to seeing you here next time on Stepping Up to the Plate. All right, everyone, take care.